A very uh, interesting talk you had here at the Brewers Forum. Um, what I was interested in is that last bit that came at the end, and a bit about the investment. Uh, yes, the big brewers, you know, they bought all these uh, craft brewers, and you yeah. know, there was a huge uproar in the craft world about that, saying, oh, this is a danger, or you're sellout. And now, you're right, this use of the word premiumization is creeping in, and sustainability. Hmm. And are, and the danger is, of course, that they destroy what they bought. Yeah. Uh, is that a warning to other craft brewers, or is it something they should be aware of, or should they not fear? I think it's something we need to be aware of. I mean, I think uh, we have this perspective that they were buying the craft brewers because craft beer was the future, and they needed to get in on it. They weren't in it on the ground floor, so they had to kind of buy it and take it over. And we had this idea that uh, the big guys were going to just own craft and what's striking now is that we automatically think of craft beers as being more premium than mainstream beers when you look at the annual reports of all the big brewers they talk about premiumization a lot and in that context they don't mention their craft brands at all so it's now starting to look like they bought those brands a because it kind of gets consumers used to a higher price point and now they're launching Mediterranean lagers at that price point uh, going back to doing what they know how to do best, bring mainstream lager, but with a new sort of, what they've learned from craft, got a new sort of premium shine on it. Uh, and then it's like they've, they've stopped the craft um, revolution by buying these bands and just blocking craft off and then kind of blocking those uh, in independent brewers now from, from getting thing. I think it was interesting, that's something that concerned me. We had a guy with a background in finance. And that's the other side we see. It's not the big brewers, it's investors or finance guys who see, oh, I like beer, but maybe this is a financial investment and I want to get a return. And so they create yeah. the ground up, or maybe they invest in a small one, but they're really the silent partner, but controller. Mm. You know, as he said, it's, do I make it because I like it? or do I make it because it sells? Mm. Is there also the danger from the financial sector, which we know are rapacious in that way? <laughs> I think there is a danger from the financial sector as well, uh, because people want a quick return on, on their money. Uh, when you look at a lot of successes in the beer world, they've been built over a long time. Um, and if people are looking for a quick return, and I know this is happening with some brewers now, it drives you into, I'm hearing more and more conversations with craft brewers saying, we make what the market wants, we make what sells, we make what keeps the lights on. And yeah, you've got to have a viable business. But if that becomes the most important thing, the only thing that, not the most important thing, if that becomes the only thing that matters, then we're kind of back to how big business operates and we're no different from that. Yeah, and it's the idea, also the idea of investing in something when it starts and then selling out. Yes. Later. I mean, yeah. you go into it. I mean, that's another side of the I mean, family, family f traditional family brewers, they're looking to grow a business to leave to their children. Uh, investors are looking for a return in three to five years. And if you know anything about investment, you don't invest unless you have an exit plan. Exactly. So, you know, if they're going to it with that point, it's like we're building this to sell. And when a business is doing that, it's very easy to spot. Excellent. Thank you so much, Pete. Thank you.